Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This Rara, Rara Sudhaniti class, Karthi 2023, we're continuing discussing verse 138, and uh, we read the verse and word meaning yesterday. We'll read the translation again. It describes uh, a sadhaka, or it can be in sadhaka rupa or siddha rupa. It can be in, in, at the level of praying, meditating on lila and siddha rupa, or it can be in the spiritual world itself, or it can be as a sadhaka. Because it's about, the, the, the mandri is searching, searching for the kunja of Radharani. The Kele Bhavan. Kele Bhavan means the play, the play cottage. So she can be searching in Italia, searching in meditative Lila, in the mind, like this. So he's saying, or she's saying, when will I search for Priyashri Radharani's play cottage in the new forest of Sweet Vrindavan? Mother, 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 mother of Vrindavan, sweet, very sweet Vrindavan. That Vrindavan bestows, Vrindavan is such a place that it gives, it distributes, it bestows ecstatic, ex, all, ex, ex, sweet ecstatic ras. So he's asking, when will I find that ras and that kunja? Well, the stream of honey wine, which flows from Radhika's lotus feet, intoxicate, intoxicate my bee-like mind. Because bees eat, drink honey, and they get drunk on too much honey. They can't even fly. They come in a flower, they drink so much nectar. And if it's good nectar, they drink so much, they can't even take off. <laughs> And the flower closes at sunset, and the bee is trapped inside, sleeping in the flower. And you're, okay, not bad. Flower bed. Bee has its own flower bed. And when sunrise comes over, and up, he comes home. His wife is angry with him. Thinks he went with another bee last night. He, was, he said, "I was trapped in the flower." She said, "Yeah, right. Yeah. Good excuse. I couldn't make it home, so I was trapped in a traffic jam." <laughs> <laughs> so he was trapped in a flower and couldn't get out till sunrise. So he has a problem on his hand, but that's what happens. So he's saying, my mind is like a bee and wants to drink the honey wine, which intoxicates one, coming from Radharani's feet. So in the commentary, Anatta Svaji, brings up a point. He says, the Sarka's mind is absorbed in the rust of Radharani's wonderful sweet form, qualities, pastimes, and compassion. So a question can be asked, who is a better thief? Who is a better thief of the mind? Krishna is a better thief? Radharani is a better thief. Because Krishna is famous for thieving. Radharani is not so famous for being a robber. Jackpot, <laughs> thief. We don't have any record of Makanchori Kishori. We have Makanchori Gopal, but not Makanchori Gopali. But Makanchori, from the earliest time he could move, he moved to steal. Like some people say, he was born to sing, she was born to dance. It's a way of glorifying someone. In other words, as soon as they came out of the womb, they started dancing. 
Maybe I should treat her like that. No. <laughs> she danced her, danced around the maternity room. <laughs> so born to dance. So Krishna was born to steal. Balbacharya, the founder of the Balva Sampradaya, he wrote an entire ostacum. It's in the Gaudiya songbook. Entire ostacum called Trunga Trunga Ashtakam. Eight prayers to the thief. <laughs> he steals yogurt, he steals sari, he steals wives, he steals hearts. He still take everything. He takes everything. You ever married, he takes your takes your wife, takes your kids, takes your house. You're left with nothing but the mom mantra. <laughs> Not bad. Good trade. <laughs> Yes, and you give up rhinestones and get Shantamani gems. Now it's Shantamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigra, Purna Shiva Nityamukta Binatra Namanamana. Holy name is Shantamani. Fulfills all your thinking, all your desires, all your aspirations. Shintamani, a jewel that fulfills, <coughs> fulfills all your thoughts. <coughs> So he's saying, so what's the answer? Who's a better thief? Radharani or Krishna? Let's find out. <laughs> Bill Mangala gives us an idea of the answer. He says, he's using a metaphor here, travelers on a road, travelers on a road <laughs> compared to what, what is the road that the travelers are on? It's not a motorway, it's not a freeway, it's not a highway. It's called Bhakti Mark. Bhakti Mark is the road of devotion. <laughs> the, the, road, the road of, of aspiring, the road leading to the kingdom of love. The destination on this road, when you're going down this road, you see signboards. You see signboards. And aren't it? Distant, did, how many kilometers to you reach love? And said, said, you're now in the village of an art of liberty. You have a few more villages to pass through. <laughs> had to go through an art of liberty. And after some lifetimes, you see a sign, welcome to Nishtha. <laughs> and you stay there for a while and say, thank you for visiting the town of Nishtha. And they welcome to the town of Ruchi. Welcome to the humble, Township of Ruchi. Hope you enjoy your stay here. He stayed here for a few light times, and then they said, of signs says, Thank you for visiting Ruchi. Bye. See you. Come again, please. And it says, Welcome to Asakti. So this is a road it's called Bhakti Mark. So Bill Manga Thakur is talking to these travelers. Travelers on the Bhakti Mark. He says, Ma Panta Panta Pati Bhima Nat Ratai. Oh traveler, don't travel fast over that road. There's a robber standing there, a thief, a chore, with a complexion dark blue like a tall tree trunk. And his hands are on his hips, and he steals the minds of all anyone traveling on that road. Anyone traveling on a Bhakti highway. Highway of Devotion, Bhakti Mark, there's a black thief going to rob you. Manasur is going to steal your mind. But that's Krishna's choring. Chori. Chori. Thieving. Chori Bazaar. But Rarani steals even the mind of the thief. So the guy he robs a bank, he gets in his car and drives down the street, you pull up to the traffic light. Thank you. You pull up to the traffic light next to the thief's car, you pull a gun and say, You're on give me your money. Wait, well, I'm a thief. Now you're getting robbed. Give me all the money you robbed from the bank. So a thief robbing from a thief. So Rarani robs, is a thief, a chori, robbing the chore. 
So, so, so obviously she's a bigger thief. Krishna steals everyone's mind, but he doesn't steal Radharani's mind. Mind. Radharani steals his mind. Radharani ki jai. Jai jai shri Radhe. Radha steals even the mind of this great thief Krishna. How she do it? With her beautiful form and qualities. Even though Shama is transcendental bliss personified, Ananda through, he becomes mad when he simply sees Radharani one time. That's pretty powerful darshan. So that's the so the answer to the question: Who's the bigger thief? What's it? Radharani. Basically, the question is: This is the Virata Rup Chapter Gita. Krishna's big this, Krishna's among beasts and the lion, among stars and the moon, among bodies of water on the ocean, and all these kind of things. But whatever Krishna is, Radharani is more. <laughs> However big Krishna is, Radharani is bigger. However powerful Krishna is, Radharani is more powerful. That's the basic <coughs> idea. So now, the point is made up, how to understand Vrindavan. So the author laments, lamenting in this verse 138 of Rara Alas, when will I search for Radharani in the ever sweet blissful Vrindavan, in the Kunjas, in the ever so sweet blissful Vrindavan? That is going to be fine. Can you turn on the fan? Three, four, what, five, I don't know. That's how like it's disturbing, I think there's a thousand flies. It is wrong but wrong control. Oh this one, I'm looking at that one. I'm looking at that one, it's not sure what it's doing. I don't care about that one, but the theater call, I don't see any flies over there. Because so you're in the dark, I'm in the light. The lights, the flies go to the light. That's, I'm, I'm in the light. <laughs> you guys are in the darkness. Tavasi ma jyotir kama. Tavasi ma jyotir kama. Kama means kama means come, come, go. Go to the light. So the flies are smart. But they should be tamasic flies and go there. <laughs> If I sit there, you sit here, all the flies are coming you. <laughs> That's my mercy. <laughs> you have to help me, my family to fly. <laughs> so he's saying, when I'm searching, where am I searching, Rarani? I'm searching, Rarani, in the mother, 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 Ananda Brindavan. Mother Madranan Rasade Vrindavan. Vrindavan, the forest Vrindavan, is sweeter than the sweet and full of blissful ras. <coughs> it can't help but be. If you stay in Vrindavan long enough, you're bound to get ripe. You come as a green mango. But you stay long enough, you'll become orange and yellow and sweet juice inside. You become very sweet and very tasty. Everyone has, everyone has the experience. Every lady and gentleman stays here for some time. It's a gradual ripening process, which is the mercy of Vrindavan Dham. So, Anandas says, the author, Saraswati Pad, is an object of Vrindavan's great mercy. That means Vrindavan itself, forget about the sadhus and the Takarjis. There's so many powerful Takarjis, Radharaman, Radhavava, Makabihari, old, old Takarjis. I one time I was, when I was living in Radhadama, I, I calculated, because, you know, 
In those days, raw down art was not very opulent. It was very simple. It didn't have much opulence. It's kind of had tons of opulence and still does, which is, is, is glories of its kind. But it was very plain there. It had old tattered curtain and funky doors. It was really, it was really a pitiable condition in 1989 through 92, up until the year 2000, 2005, then many people got involved giving donations, building new entrance gates, building new altars, everything became new, everything. It was like cross rubies were spent around the dollar development. So it was very, uh, not a very nice situation there. There was a severe lack of money, somehow or other, and simple, very few outfits, and, and now it's like a show-stopping temple. It's amazing. I forgot the point I want to make, but uh, oh yeah, the mercy of Vrindavan. So I remember the the Mahant there, Pancho Gosai. He's gone to Goloka, but Pancho Gosai used to come to my room asking for donations to do different savings, build a Tulsi house and behind the temple, which is still there. It became an eggplant garden. <laughs> he said he wanted to build a Tulsi house. He put a few Tulsis, because the Bengalis like eggplants, they want. So he planted eggplants and green peppers and stuff there. Okay, you know, but there's one Tulsi also. But the beak was like really like ten, five meter, five meters. It was big, like a little house, cage, you know, metal. So he did different things. So he told me his plans. If I ever get money, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. He had many plans. He was a very creative, innovative person. And I remember going to visit him about five years ago before he left the world. I said, Pancho, every all the plans that you told me 20 years ago, they all have come true. Everything you said, I want to have a grill. I have tired of these monkeys. I want to cover the whole frickin' water with a grill, see the monkeys out. Yes, make a bigger door, entrance and entrance, to, <coughs> and exit and entrance to the courtyard from the Samadhi area. Many things. Everything he's, he's done. A man proposes, Dominator disposes. <laughs> Because in that temple, the mantra that that temple owners, Joy Domador, Joy Dom, Joy, Joy, Joy Domador, Joy Domador, J O Y, Joy, Joy, it's J I or J A Y, Joy, Joy, Joy Domador. And that's a fact, all glory to Domador. He did miracles there. It was really amazing. So Vrindavan, this is the mercy of Vrindavan, anything is possible. So, what Nathas is saying is the author is a, obvious, is a clear uh, uh, example of the great mercy from Vrindavan. You can understand how Prabhupada and the Saraswati has been so blessed by Vrindavan by reading his monumental book called Vrindavan Mahimamrita. This book became manifest simply by the grace of Vrindavan Dham. How many devotees have read this book, Vrindavan Mahimamrita? You should read it, it's very important, uh, cover to cover. It's full of Leelas and full of Baba. There's so many great things. I've given classes on also. Yeah. It's very good, amazing book. It's a very common book that's given classes on by all the Vrindavan Goswamis and Vrindavan Sadhus. They give open good class on Bhakta Mal and Vrindavan Mahimamrita. Because we're all, you're all the, we have in common all the different Sadhus, all the different Vaishnavas, everyone living in Vrindavan has common commonality, we all have Vrindavan Vas. We're all living in the Holy Dham, Sri Dham Vrindavan. So a book that glorifies your home is very important. I hear from Moscow, and there's a book about Moscow. 
You'll be the first one to buy it. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not. But you know, that's their their pride because it's the holy down. Book about Vrindavan means the book about Radha and Krishna. So he quotes a verse from Vrindavan, my my mom he said, Maha Madhura Gomaka Juma Lata Maha Madhuri during a during a da, during a Dharanitalam Sumadurali Pete Sun Rigam Mahamadurata Durodura Sarasarid Budaram Mahamadura Bhavadam Madhura Meva Brindavanam. So a lot of Madhura there, a lot of sweetness. This is from the fifth chapter. It's called Sataka. The chapter is called Satak. Shatak, number five, verse thirty-four. Long, long, poetic, sweet verse. Mahamadrata Duradura Sarasari Vrindavan. Sri Vrindavan is a, at a place, a realm, a divine realm that gives very sweet love. It shines like sweetness itself. And Vrindavan is very sweet. It's filled, <coughs> filled with sweet bushes and trees. It has sweet vines that crawl along the ground. There are sweet bees and birds and deer and lakes and rivers and hills. Everything there in Vrindavan is made of the essence of sweetness. So, Now, now that just makes a point. How to how to have pro, how to see Vrindavan with a proper vision, and not just she is feeling sad. So he writes that how he's why he, why he's feeling sad. He says. How sad it is that some people visit Vrindavan, but they fail to recognize the transcendental sweetness of Vrindavan. Mm. When many materialistically inclined, maybe pious religious people, even Krishna bhaktas of source, or some kind of Vaishnav, they visit here on Yatra, or they come for a wedding or some function, stay for a few days. They don't see the sweetness. What they'll see is all the water in this Vrindavan tastes like salt, and all the trees are bubble trees, thorn trees, and all the Vrishvasis there, they speak a very bad language. All the Vrishvasis speak what's called gully, gully basha. They speak Gali Basha and they speak very crude language. The tonal quality of Vrishvasi, most people, excluding some high class Brahmins, etc., most people speak very rough. Oh, congregate! Very rough type talk. When you go to Delhi, other parts of India, with other Indians speaking the same language as Hindi, it's very sweet, very soothing to the ears. And the water, water in friends' colony, you, choke, you choke, open the tap, you can drink the tap water. It's so clean. It's not full of minerals and hard water. A car called Karapani. The pani here, you don't have a bifilter pani, you can't drink it. You'll die. I like have a meter to measure the, the purity of water, it's called TDS. Total dissolved solids. <coughs> so the WHO highest permissible drinkable water is 200 TDS. When you buy bisleri water in a bottle, it's not a meter, it checks this out. Bisleri bottle is always 80. It's, it's 80, so it's not bad. Aquafina, when Aquafina was available, was 10. It was much Lighter, lighter tasting water than Bizarre, Aquafina by Pepsi. But if you take the hand pump, you take a boring, I have a boring here, 
take a hand pump and pump that water and check it out. The TDS is 2,500. <laughs> That's the same everywhere around here. That means arsenic, lead, all kinds of heavy metals. So if you were drinking that. You know, if you put a fluorescent light bulb by somebody's body, their body will light up because there's so much isotope, isotopes of different <laughs> radioactive minerals in their body, you know. <laughs> you put your finger on a light bulb, it'll light up, you know. <laughs> so it's free. So that's what people see. They'll miss the sweetness. They're, oh, they're all bubble trees here. In my, I live in French colony. We have Kadama trees. We have Blast trees. We have Ben. We have tree, All beautiful trees. There's all bubble. Every church thorn trees. Which is true. So the sadhus who live here say this is the covering of Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya is put a covering on Vrindavan, a Maya covering to keep out the non devotees. Devotees will take, accept Vrindavan, worship Vrindavan, live in Vrindavan as much as they can, and regardless of how it is, because they're experiencing not the trees, not the water, not the people. They're experiencing the mother of mother of Tara, the divine, incredibly satisfying, fulfilling, mystical, magical, captivating, enchanting sweetness of Vrindavan, each and every individual in their own way. So I, I've been seeing this guy come to Vrindavan for 25 years. He's not stupid, he's an intelligent man, educated, he has money. But he spends money to come here and spend some quality time every year, or twice a year or something. So he's got captivated. <laughs> he got enchanted by that sweetness, not by the thorn trees, not by the salty water. It doesn't matter, that's not the essence. What is the essence about a human being? This is their body or their beauty. I mean, beauty of their body or beauty of their heart. Beauty of the heart is the essential attractive magnetic quality. The beauty of the heart shines through the ugly, ugliest body becomes beautiful. If inside the ugly body there's a beautiful heart. I was just visited, I got a wedding invitation. I'm going actually. No, I've never been to a wedding. I get a thousand you think. Wedding invitation to a lady. And physically you might think she's not very pretty. But she's getting married, so somebody thinks she's pretty. And uh, but she had a very big heart and a very nice, another person. She was one of my students for about 15 years. And I asked my, my Ananga, my god sister, who was preaching in Delhi. I said, is she ready for initiation? She comes to visit me every so often. She's been around for 20 years. Like one of those Sunday feast guests, you know, to Soho Beach. Guy's come for 49 years. The cell beats every Sunday feast, knows every sonality, knows everything about this guy. But surrendering? Following four regular principles? Later, man. <laughs> Chris is good, but not that good. I mean, I can't sacrifice that much. So she, of course, not like that. But I asked her, I said, Is she ready for initiation? She said, Not yet. Because she has a way of t telling that kind of stuff. So I said, Okay. Whatever. That's, uh, that's uh, with her and Krishna. So you should see that there's nothing material or mundane or in Vrindavan. Everything here is transcendental, and by Vrindavan's mercy, and gra grace, a neophyte bhakta will gradually be able to see that with his or her own eyes. Then, when one sees Vrindavan in that sweet, original, transcendental form, then the devotee can begin a blissful life of spontaneous devotion, rag, bhakti. This is a realized statement of Ananda Swabhaji. 
So I ask a question, everyone, now. Why do you live in Vrindavan? Do you live in Vrindavan to find peace or to go mad? <coughs> or find, look for peace but end up going mad? <laughs> Three options. <laughs> you live in Vrindavan to be peaceful, you live in Vrindavan intent, intentionally and purposely to go mad, or do you go mad as you're trying to be peaceful? <laughs> the third option is most popular. Third option. And I'll just to provide that, but I'm providing that one. <laughs> you live down to be peaceful, but it doesn't turn out that way. <laughs> you go, ah, mad. I give up. Hey, right, hey, right, hey. So the author says, when I search for my Ishri Rani, my Priyashri, in the sweet play kunjas of ever so sweet Vrindavan, when will, when will I do that? The word is there, Kada. Kada, Kabe and Kada means when. For, for this, for this, the Raghunuga Bhakti comes to Vrindavan. Raghunuga Bhakti doesn't live in Vrindavan to get peace. But he, he comes to search for the sweet conjures of Radharani and Vrindavan. But Raghunuga Bhakti comes to live in Vrindavan for a purpose of not peace, but becoming mad. What kind of madness? Mad with ecstatic passion and love. Rag Bhakti. And he cries out, or she cries out, I'm living here, I'm moving all around your little stallies. I'm always visiting your little stallies. Where are you? I'm living in Radhakun. You're here for six hours a day. You're here for six hours a day. I'm here for 20 hours a day. You're here, I'm here, but I don't see you. She says, I see you? Well, that's good. <laughs> I guess that's when I'm surviving, because you're looking at me. <laughs> if you're not looking at me, I won't sit survive. Where are you, Rarani? All right, where is your Vilas Kunj? <coughs> here is, here, this is, this, here, this is Vrindavan. Look at your beautiful Radhakun. This is your sweet playground. Your pastimes are eternally going on here. Even right now, you're enjoying here with your Pranath Sham. Alas, but my eyes are blinded by <laughs> Don't wake her up. If you call her name, she may wake up. It says, there's a phrase, you shouldn't wake a sleeping lion. So Maya rides on a lion. Maya's name is Durga. She rides a lion. So when, when Durga is sleeping, her lion is also sleeping. So don't wake up the lion. Jai Jai Shri Rani. But my eyes are blinded by Maya, thus I cannot see your sweet pastime, Ravan. The Goswamis are in the same mood of madness when they lived in Vrindavan. Hey, Braje, hey, Radhe, Braje, Devi, K, Chalali, Te, hey, Nanda, Suna, Kutala, Shri Govardhan, Kavapada, Patale, Kalindi Vani Kuta Goshanta Viti Sarvata Vrja Pare Kedar Mahavi Velo Vande Rupa Sanatana Rugu Yugo Shri Jiva Gopalako Shri Vasacharya says 
I offer my obeisances to the six Goswamis. Rupa Goswami, Sanatan, Raghunath, Raghunath Bhatta, Jiva Goswami, and Gopal Bhatta, who are anxiously crying and wandering all over Braj, crying, O oh, Radhe, O oh, Brajadevi, O oh, Lalita, O oh, Nanda Nanda, where are you? Are you at the, uh, standing on a desire tree near Goran Hill? Are you in a forest on the bank of the Yamuna? Where are you? Uh, Ma Vival. Ma Vival means greatly agitated, greatly disturbed. The six Goswamis are our teachers, are, are our teachers of Mantri Bhav Sadhana. Raghunuga Bhaktas should develop a similar mood, similar anxious feelings of ecstatic love. So the summary of what he's saying here, what he's been discussing, because his discussion was how to live in Vrindavan, how to go mad in Vrindavan. This, is what, this means going mad. Mahavival. Mahavivalo. Gopala ko kuta kuta. Develop anxious feelings. So doing bhajan and Vrindavan means feeling anxious. No peace. We're singing in anxiety. Where is Radharani? This is Radhakun. Radharani plays here every day with Sham. But I'm so unfortunate that I'm living here too, but I can't see Radharani. Hey Radhe, hey Kano, where are you? I read the verse again. Amazing verse 138. A lot of interesting topics based around the subject of the verse. The verse that talks about Vrindavan, talks, the verse talks about searching for Radharani's Kunja and Vrindavan and praying for a stream of mercy of love to intoxicate the bee of his mind. I read another translation of this verse. <coughs> Kada, when? <coughs> when in Vrindavan, the bestower of sweet, sweeter than sweet, blissful mellows. In Vrindavan, when will I explore the fresh flowering kunjas? the sporting bower houses, Kili Bhavan, of my beloved mistress, my Ishri, Priyashri Radharani. And when, in the flowing waves, in the flowing wave, waves of honey wine, flowing from Radha's lotus feet, will my extremely restless be like mine, become wild, wildly intoxicated in sheer madness. Very visual translation, very rich, colorful type of translation. <coughs> Are you taking antibiotics? You're just fooling around with homeopathic junk. You definitely take antibiotics. Every time you take antibiotics, you have to take probiotic also. Sporolac. Sporolac can get in the drugstore. Sporolac tablets, take two. <laughs> I said, you know, I have a BSL, but I can play, play doctor, you know. Because <laughs> they kill all the good bacteria in your gut and you have to build them up. So you take a morning and noon, eating that uh, antibiotic and take the other thing. So now we're do. Uh, I take some water. Um. <coughs> Thank you. This is good. 
our water. Screw it down, not in June. Everything's relative. Colonization and pressure. Same pressure during college, same age during call time. Same drinker, same place, but now how we're all. Summer now. Everything's hot. You have to hear the water story. <laughs> Water is hotter than your body. Body is 37, the water is 40, 42. <laughs> you don't have to make tea, you just put your cup out and put tea back in. It makes tea automatically. <laughs> it is so hot. This is your affinity, text 139. Shardua Vikrita Chandas. This is your Swami. Radha Kaili Nikunja Vitishutran. Radha Radha Bidam Uchran. Radhaya Anarupa Meva Paramam. Dharmam Rasena Charam Radha Yash Charanambujam Paricharan Nano Nano Pachara Muda Kari Sham Stuti Sheko Shekaro Paricharan Ascharya Charyan Charan He's now explaining how he's the, he means the Sadaka, Raghunuga the Sadaka, who is in love with Rarani and worshiping Rarani. What does he think about all the Vedas? He says, I'm, I'm in a different, different, I'm dancing to the tune of a different drummer. The Vedas are sending out a particular beat particular ideas and conceptions. But I, I, I'm walking over the crown of the Vedas because I'm busy, I'm not going to walk on the path of Veda, Veda Dharma, Veda Mark, but I'm walking on a, on a foot fast, foot fast of the Kunjas of Vrindavan. I'm busy loudly chanting Rarai's name. I have time to do Puja and worship and all these other things. I've been captivated by the Rajani Kunjas and by the name of Radharani. That's what this verse is talking about. Translation. When I walk over the crown of the Vedas, behaving in a, I'll be behaving in a very amazing way <clears throat> while wandering over the pathways of Radharani's Play Bowers, Kunjavan. Loudly sing Radharani's name, uh, and by this I'm performing the highest duty with a great, great taste and blissfully serving Radharani's lotus feet with different upachar, different power from the non upachar. I'm serving Muda Muda Achar, upachar. I'm um, happily, Muda means happily, blissfully serving Rani. Paricharya Seva. Parichara means worshiping Charambuja. Radha, Radha, Radha Charambuja, Paricharya. There we say it, Prasanga Seva, Guru Seva, Prasanga Guru Seva, and Paricharya Guru Seva. So this is personal, personal service to Rani. It's called Paricharya. Massaging your feet, brushing your hair, washing your clothes, 
painting her feet, making her flower bed, all this stuff. So word for word, Rada Kini Kunj. That sounds good. Has a nice ring to it. Rada Kini Kunj. Kunja means, the Kunja means very confidential place in the forest where Radha Krishna play. And the Kunja means it's very, very secret and hidden. Only when people enter that the Kunja are Radha Krishna and one or two Manjuris. No Sakis go there and no anybody else goes there. There's uh, uh, yeah, different categories. Most like you were talking about Sunday said so, uh, GSS. There's Kunjas. Nikunjas. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There's I made a mistake. There's three types of Kunjas. There's Kunj, there's Nikunj, and the Brittany Kunj. The Brit Brittany means servant, people. There's no need, there's no servants there. In the Brittany Kunj, it's only Rod and Krishna. And this is what's described, what's the feature of Saki Sampradaya called, uh, what is that? Vrindavan. Nimbark. Nimbark Sampradaya. There's Saki, Saki Sampradaya. They worship Rod and Krishna, Saki Bab. And they have Nishini Kunjalila. But it's this in the Brittany Kunja little. The Brittany Kunja. There's Kunja and the Kunja and the Brittany Kunja. So in the Kunja, it's also very confidential. But some Sakis can enter there, Parma Prasha Sakis, and of course Manjris and Manjris. And the Kunja, Madhav Mangal can come there, Subal can come there. There are even different cowboys that are pre enormous Sakis. He answered the Kunja. So that's what Charlie has explained these. Different, different, different degrees of intimacy, privacy, and exclusivity. Members only. <laughs> Kunja is general, general people in, in Madhurya Rati, Madhurya Rati, but uh, the more select group as the Kunja gets more private and confidential. And also, Kunjas are near the banks of the Yamuna. Jairada Madhava Kunja Vihari Yamuna Tata Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Tira means bank. On the banks of the Yamuna are these Kunjas. So in those Kunjas, Radha Krishna there, Subhal, Madhavanga, View. But you go deeper in the forest, you get any kunj, you go very deep in the forest, there's no light of any sort, no moonlight, anything goes there. That's the Brittany Kunj. It's like a cave on the land. You go in under the cave under the ground, everything's dark and confidential. But the kunjas are so dark and confidential, it's like a cave on the surface of the land, not under the ground. It's the Brittany Kunj. You see? <coughs> You've been in your house as well? <laughs> so we're word for word, so. Radhikiva and Ikunja, V2, V2, VT means pathway, char and moving, and uh, busy, Radhana Ucharan, Radhana Ucharan, Ucharan means I got three types of Chang Java. What are three types? Actually, Wait. there's three types. Oh, I just made a mistake. There's two types of Chang Java. There's three types of Chang Krishna's holy name. Two apply to Java, two apply to Java, and one apply to Kirtan. So the three ways of Chang Krishna's name are how? Kirtan, which is not Java, and two kinds of Java. Kirtan means the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna. That's Kirtan, not Java. Java means whispering, so only you can hear. That's called Upamsu. Upamsu means whispering. You can hear, maybe somebody sitting on your lap can hear. 
Hopefully it's your wife. <laughs> or your baby. <laughs> and then there's monastic job which means silent. No he can hear. You can't hear either. The Christian ears in the heart. Anahata Shabda. Vibration in the heart. Anahata Anahata Chakra, Anahata Shabda. Sound in the heart. The Mama just vibrate in the heart. The Masi Java. So he's saying, I'm chanting this Ucharan, Uchaisik. Ucharan means Kirtan, actually. It means loudly chanting. Rani's name. I'm wandering around go around saying, Rani, 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 Rani. And then he says, I'm pronouncing, chanting Rani's name, Anarupam Paramam Dharma. This, this is the Supreme Dharma. I have it, Rasin Atran. Because I'm tasting the Supreme Dharma of Rani's name, I'm behaving Acharan, Radhe Acharan I'm worshiping Radhe's feet. Ubachar, because the Vedas, the Vedas and Upanishads and Puranas, they talk about Ubachar, Taisa Puja, Pancha Ubachar, Shodasha Ubachar, Ek Ubachar. Ubachar means method, objects of offering and puja. There's five, offering five objects, offering 16, offering one. So he said, I'm doing Ubachar, Nana, Nana Ubachar, I'm doing varieties of worship of Rani's feet. I'm painting her toenails, I'm putting ankle bells on it, I'm bathing her feet, I'm massaging her feet, I'm painting about, like on the bottom of her feet, it's all Radhacharambacham Paricharya Nana Bachar. So my worship, my puja, my 16 islands of puja all on focus on Rani's feet. I'm doing Sringar, I'm doing Abhishek of Rani's feet. I'm doing Sringar of Rani's feet with nail polish and toe rings and ankle anklets and ankle bells. And I'm doing Arti of Rani's feet. So this is my object of worship. That's what the Sanskrit is saying. Kari Kari Samstruti Shekopari. And I step over the, the crown, Shekar, the crown of Shrutis. This is my behavior. So let's look at the commentary and see what it says. This is the mood of wandering in Brudge. So we're going to wander in Brudge in the future on Yatras. So we'll have to have this mood and prayer. The Sadaka pray, humbly prays. When will the blessed day come? And I can walk over the pathways, pathways of Raikas, Kali, Kunjas, while exper clearly experiencing the past signs that are already placed there with the Pramala of Asham. At that time, having that experience of Ron Krishna's mother, Leela, <coughs> I will get thrill bumps of ecstasy on my skin as I meditate on these sweet pastimes. As a result, everything will become clearly visible to my eyes. So it starts as Dhyanam. Close that door. Thank you. It starts as Dhyanam, meditating, meditating on Rakhra's Lila, and doing modesty seva in the mind. And dhyana becomes concentrated and steady, unbroken, becomes Jivana Sriti. 
and Sri Rana Smriti progresses to the plate platform of Samadhi. And that's, so in the beginning, you're meditating on Sri Pasadena, as a result of this meditation, I'm not saying, as a result of dhyan, Lila Dhyanam, I'll have Lila Swarti. Swarti with Swarti in Sankar Darshan. Uh, when I meditate in Sri Pasadena, as, re, as my meditation progresses, result of this meditation, everything will become clearly visible to my eyes. Clearly visible to my eyes, meaning Sakshat Darshan, directly seen with my eyes. Uh, one way of seeing is seen with the eye, eyes of the mind, the mind's eye. That's called meditation, jhana. But the ultimate way of seeing is with these eyes. Krishna gives you Divya Chakshus, gives you divine eyes to see transcendental energy. What is uppercut, what's invisible to material eyes, becomes visible to spiritual eyes. How you get the spiritual eyes? Spiritual eyes are given by Krishna. When? When he feels like you. <laughs> nam, nam, there's a verse, Nam, Nam, Prabhachanena, Labya. Our future. Raise a part of our key So our in-house pundit, <laughs> pundit duo, Jai Vijay, no. <laughs> Jagai <Lata. laughs> He has uh, quoted the correct verse which says when Krishna uh, Krishna's Yajitya, Yajitya means his free will, when he wants to give his darshan, he will. His own sweet will, his own sweet time. So we have to position ourselves in such a way that we get darshan. Or Krishna, when he decided it wouldn't rise. Once Duryodhana and Arjuna went to Dwarka to Darshan or Krishna. Why they go there? Because they're going to go to they're going to fight a civil war. So Duryodhana got there first to Dwarka, and Duryodhana entered the bedroom. And Krishna was sleeping. Dwarkadish was sleeping. Duryodhana entered, and he went and sat, took a chair right near Krishna's head. When you wake up, you'll, his idea, his thinking was, when Krishna wakes up, you're going to turn his head to get out of bed. He'll see me sitting in the chair. Oh, you're here, what do you want? So Arjuna came later, so he deliberately, even if he came first, he sat at the feet of Krishna. Arjuna is the devotee, he sat at the feet of Krishna. They were both going to Krishna for the same purpose. They both had a race to get the Dwarka. Duryodhana got there first. Why they went there? They went there to obey Krishna's help in the war. They wanted to get his army. He had a very powerful army. They wanted to increase their forces by getting Krishna's army to join their army to be at the Pandavas or be at the Kauravas. Either one. So Arjuna was at the feet. So when Krishna woke up, his habit is to look at his feet. <laughs> when Krishna wakes up, he looks, he goes like this, like, oh, I'm there. <laughs> Fear there. <laughs> so he looks at his feet, and Arjuna came. No, my, 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 my Prabhu, oh Prabhu, actually we had a contest, whoever got here first, they asked you first. So, Triodin, my cousin brother, he came here first. He's sitting next to you. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Triodin! Namaste. What do you say, namaste? So what's the matter? So then he said. And so he said, I, I want your army. And so Christian said, let me think about it. He said, Arjun, what do you want? He said, I want you. So, Krishna, Krishna, okay, that settles it. You take the army, I'll go with Arjuna. 
So Sanjay didn't think this was a good idea. At the end of our Gita he says, Sanjay spoke to Gita Triyodhan and said, In my opinion, Triyodhan, the enemy party has Krishna and Arjuna. Wherever this combination together, the, the great yogi and the great archer Arjuna, no one can defeat them. So you don't have much luck winning this war. That's the personal secretary. The prime minister's personal secretary said, Listen, boss, you're going to lose the war. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story of Kind of see Krishna. So that's what Natha is saying. That the Raksadikas, they're wandering here trying to see Krishna. Okay. Well, everything will be visible to my eyes. Oh, I had to bring it up. Okay, good. Save by the time. I want to bring one book for reverence. I, I know that you're bringing this book, but I forgot the book. <laughs> so, fortunately, Krishna the time factor is favoring me. <laughs> so tomorrow I'll read the book <laughs> and finish the commentary on verse 138, I think it is. 139 or Rara Sunni Kija, Purna Sarasati Kija, Shiva Natas Raji Maharaj Kija, Jai Jai Sri Rani.